the co-founders of Land Academy and House Academy coming to you live today because we've been getting, frankly, a lot of questions of, uh, you know, with everything going on right now, we thought we'd take a few minutes on, well, more than a few minutes, obviously, but spend some time with you here on, on Sunday afternoon and just make ourselves available. Uh, we have some great uh, tips and things that we can share based on our experience way more Stevens than my experience. So, and just, you know, help everybody through these times as investors. So I'm gonna pause just a second. I wanna see, um, bear with me here. I'm trying to see, uh, everybody can see us and hear us and make sure that that's all going well. So feel free, I'm looking for, you know, write in some comments. I am watching for you, did Aaron pipe in? No. Not yet, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give you just a few few minutes here to uh, check in and let me know that you can see us and that you can hear us. How's your day going, Stephen? Great. All right. This oh, is... I'm sorry. I I'm, I was. Uh, you could talk. I was told to that I was the co-pilot today. Oh, you are kind and, of the uh, co-pilot. And Jill, this is Jill's live thing, so I know. I'm here to. Thank you. I'm showing that I'm broadcasting on the Land Academy page. So if you're not seeing it, um, we're not seeing a link. Hold, please. Ah, you do. Okay. Thank you, Geo Mitch. Thank you for letting me know. All right. So people are joining. All right. Now you got us. So people are finding us. So I'm really glad. Thank you. I'm going to give it just a, another minute. How I, you know, feel free to at any point, by the way, this is so casual today. I just have like some bullet points, some things I want to share. But uh, just feel free to type in your notes and any any moment you've got something you want to ask or say, uh, just just please do it. All right, thank you. All right, now now we're joining in. Now I see everybody. Thank you. All right, so uh, again, I'm Jill DeWitt, and this is my partner Stephen Jack Butella, and we are Land Academy House Academy. And the reason I wanted to do this today is because. Stephen's been doing this since the nineties. He, um, you know, buying and selling, maybe even earlier than that. You know, when early nineties, yeah, early nineties. You know, not late nineties or early nineties. This has been his thing. So, what's going on right now and today? Uh, this is he's done it. He's been through many before. I've been through. Four. I came in. The, thank you. On the this tail end, four. I came in at number three. I think it was mm -hmm. when I started working with you. You know, in the two thousand seven, eight, nine, whatever that. Um, time period. I know you're going to talk more about that for us. So that's where I came in. Jim. That's what, that's what we're really going to talk about today. Yeah. You know, your real estate business during a recession, because mm -hmm. we're like it or not, we're, we're heading into one. And honestly, it's about time. This has been the longest, uh, the longest positive econ economy scenario this country has seen in uh, a century. So yes. corrections are, are inevitable and necessary. Uh, here's the good news, and this is really the message I want to send today, loud and clear. Now is the time to buy real estate, especially land. The the uh, Jill, some of the best real estate deals that we've ever done are during these downturns. Mm -hmm. um, so we get a lot of questions, and I'm I'm going to answer them publicly today. Uh, let, let's call it a FAQ scenario. Right. Um, I wrote a blog about this. I don't uh, two days ago, and I don't think it's published yet, but it's all about buying land in a recession and, and what to expect. And uh, it's all positive. I will say that um, there's a couple of things that you need to be really ready for uh, and not surprised by. So the length of time that you're going to own property is going to increase during this time. So well, let's I don't, save that but yeah. we're gonna, cause I have, I have yeah. kind of a, a, a loose agenda today, if you will, even though this is casual and this is just because so many of you reached out and said, we have questions, we're panicking, we want to talk to you. That's what's going on here. And that's why I put a little note in there. Consider this like a little quick little free consulting time for everybody. Oh, that's good. why I want you to see it, you know, ask us that's questions. That's a great way to put it. You know, that's, that's really what's going on right now. So, okay. It's the Jill show. <laughs> <laughs> she isn't says it, it's about it real always? estate, but it's not. It's about Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it, it's, well... Let's call a spade a spade between the two of us. <laughs> here's, a, here's the truth. Between the two of us, who jacks our company up 
and who calms our down, our company down, our people and stuff. <laughs> this one gets everybody excited and jacked up. They're like, oh, what should we be doing? And I'm like, okay, everybody, we can be calm. We got this. So it's a little bit of his experience. That's what we're going to do today. You're going to get a little jacked up because he's going to talk about some of his past experiences and what really went down. And then I'm going to calm everybody down. <laughs> and I want everyone to leave this today feeling good, have answers, and know what you're going to do. Know what we're getting into, yeah. Even if you're not currently an investor right now. And because we're going to, I want to open that up too at the end when we do the q and I'm pretty sure there are people watching right now who are looking for alternative ways to make money. Seriously, with stuff going on right now, we all know that. I'm like, I was, look at all the jobs and things that are changed, people sent home and people, restaurants and things kind of closing. I've heard a lot of that going on and people are like panicking a little bit, like I got to make some money. So um, we want to share our stuff because this could be something for people too. All right. So we are the pro. We kind of talked a little bit about this. You know, I think you kind of are getting it if you're here, but we've been doing this, you know, since the 90s, him since the 90s, me since 12. 16,000 deals we've done. Yes. Together, we've done a lot of transactions. So we know how to and we buy and didn't, sell. We real certainly estate. didn't stop during mm. any recession. No. And I mean, that's an important point to say, too. Through all the ups and downs of our career here in the however many years, one thing never went away and it was always buying and selling land. I personally, uh, like when he was creating Land Academy back in 2014, 2015, I by myself ran our land company and it paid all the bills so he could just go off and put this program together and and, uh, and share this, right? It's, so no matter what we have done in our lives together over the last many years, Buying and selling land always kept food on our table. And I, I, I never worry about it. And anytime we talk about, not that we really do, but you know, you, you, you dream about what if we should do something else with our, our lives, you know, no matter what, I will never stop buying and selling land because it will always feed us. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So again, I wanted to have this live, just, you know, free flowing chat, just to share with you a couple things. Uh, I want, Steven's going to share some of his experiences briefly over the last couple of years. He's going to give us kind of a idea of the time period, what happened, what he learned, what went down and you know, how kind of, what the outcome was. That's the first thing we're going to talk about. Number two, I want to share a little bit about what we are doing right now to make sure that we are personally going to come out of this. Okay. And feel good. And then three, I want to share some things about what you can do right now as an investor or a wannabe investor uh, to do what we do and keep food on your table and sleep well at night and make sure the bills are paid. And the last thing I'm gonna do is a Q and A time, kind of uh, open it up for you to just ask us, you know, any questions that you have. So if you're ready, I'm just gonna dive in. Sure. So I wanna say, you know, Stephen, we're gonna start right now. I'm gonna ask Stephen just to kind of share with us briefly, one, two, and three that you went through recessions, uh, what went down, like what happened, like one's 9-11, I know, and what the outcome was, please. All of these recessions have a few things in common. Number one, they all start with a media event. And that's what this is. This virus is a media event. It's nothing more. It's very, very important to, to remember this. It doesn't affect you. There's a 99.999% chance that whoever you are watching this and listening to this, you're not going to be affected by it. The same thing with 9-11. It's tragic. It was terrible to watch that on TV if you're old enough to remember this stuff. Uh, but it was just that in a media event. So yes, there was loss of lives, and I don't mean to undermine that in any way. Mm -hmm. But let's all be honest for a second. We weren't really affected by it. And if you if you were personally affected by this, you know, I'm, I, my, my heart's out to you. But the vast majority, same thing with this virus. When the dot com busted in the late 90s, uh, it was, you know, it didn't affect us. So, in the, you know, in 2010, which is really was the real serious deep recession, re real estate driven recession, 5% uh, more uh, people lost their jobs. 
that, that means that 95% of us still had our jobs. Did it affect you? I hope not. I truly mean that heartfelt. I mean, it, but it doesn't affect most of us. So let's just keep this in perspective. It's not, it's not, a, it's consuming uh, the news. It's important mm -hmm. to not get emotional. So these media events cause emotion, right. which causes a behavior change. Is it necessary? No. In fact, most emotion is not necessary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're, it's all tragic okay, when that you're was, in it. <laughs> that was for me, not for you, by the way. <laughs> what Thanks. should you do? Thanks. You're looking for bargains in real estate. Yeah. And does that mean we're taking advantage of people? Because no, it doesn't mean anything negative. Right. It's all very, very, very positive. Uh, it's just as positive as buying a stock when it's really lower, right. when the values are lower. So just keep it in perspective. Is that what you wanted me to discuss? Well, this can you give us, your show. I want a little more detail. Can you give me a little more, um, a little more, what am I trying to say? Like years. Okay. Sure. Number one was this one, not like 90, whatever, or 2000, there, whatever. There were, there's little ups and okay. downs all the way through. The real ones were 9-11 driven. Right. 9-11 uh, really caused some a slowdown in real estate, specifically in houses. Right. And commercial real estate and um, new home development our land business did not suffer at all in fact it increased what really happens in during these downturns is this here's what you're usually doing and then a media event happens and people get emotional so you start buying cheaper here's your sales they used to be here they go down so it's this right. sales uh, acquisition prices go down sale prices go down and you have a, a longer time span uh, a hold, let's call it a hold time. Mm -hmm. But all the stuff that we regularly do, like the red, green, yellow test, there's a reason that I don't stand up at our live events or in, on our sh uh, podcast or shows. Give hard numbers like your days on market have to be less than 30. No, what I say is it's relative to each other. Right. So when you're looking at areas to purchase land and you're red, green, yellow testing it uh, against pitting them against each other, they're relative. So all the days on market for all the real estate in this country are going to go up. So you just choose the best one in that scenario. It's relative. Okay. I'm going to get real specific here with you. I'm going to interview you. Okay. Tell me about 9-11 and what business you, what was your business at that time? 9-11, uh, we had no house business. We only had land. We were buying and selling land gangbusters, hundreds of properties a week. It slowed down. Uh, our acquisitions increased. Our sales uh, our acquisition volume increased and our hold time became longer, but man, okay. uh, that was good news for us, you know, okay. and I hate to, again, I can't say it enough. It was tragic, you know, and I, I would never wish it on anyone, but right. these down times, you can make, make them very positive from a acquisitions and a sales standpoint. Okay. I want to, I really want to be personal here and share real stuff here too. So tell me like, um, at that time that was before the office building and for some other things that you own. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes. we've made some mistakes here, folks. This is what I really want to share too. Is like, I want to share, you know, even though house prices might go down here, does it mean run out and buy a house and to get, take on a mortgage? No, you know, I want to share some, some, maybe even just some personal things about some mistakes that, that we've made and, yeah. and really help like. During the downturn in between 07 and 11, uh, I owned an office building with a bunch of tenants and mm -hmm. all the tenants left. And so, you know, I ended up renegotiating that and we had a, a, a multi-million dollar loan, loan loans on that building. And I, and I negotiated with the lender to, for them to, you know, we just, we negotiated a buy down and a sell of the sale, ultimately the property. So there were some mistakes. You want to talk about mistakes, yeah. you know, yeah. we were the, all the mistakes I've ever made that were driven by, uh, debt being in debt, you Thank know, you. and it was all asset that that was tied to the assets. So there, there wasn't crazy tragedy, but we, I learned my lesson. And yeah. so we both did. Now we don't have any debt at all, not a dollar and never will again. Exactly. It's too easy to take on partners, which is what we do now. And you right. should be doing that too. Here's the other thing about a recession. People with money come out of the woodwork, you know? So if you're finding great deals and they're half of what, you know, half price, we're, our, our group is packed yeah. full of people that would, and us included, right. love to be your partner. So, and that's not why we're doing this. We're really doing this to, Exactly. The whole point of this talk is to, to have you be prepared for what's going to happen right? and to take advantage of it, quite honestly. Okay. So that was kind of step one. I was getting, trying to get Steven to share. I think you guys kind of get the picture here. 
he's been through one, two, three, and come out of it, you know, and along the way learned, okay, you know, never get in that situation again, you know, like take, buy an office building, buy a yacht, buy this, buy that, right? You think yachts are cheap now? Like, oh my gosh, you know, you could probably get- Now's the time to buy Now's the time to buy a yacht. Just pay cash for it, that's my point. But you, but that's money you'll never get back again. (laughs) So you, you, I don't know if that's the best thing to do. So anyway, I'm trying to pull out of him, you know, that to to share with you. Because I know I can't, I met him, I met him in the last one. And I was at the beginning of the last one. Yeah. I can remember, but it was, it was the end. It was the end. It was a tip tail end. So, and I said goodbye to the office building and I never got to go on that <laughs> yacht, <laughs> but I've seen all the pictures <laughs> and I heard all the stories uh, about that and all the fun. So, but, uh, so there's, my point is that is uh, we learn so much from that, that there's decisions we make right now today, even though we are in a completely different and better financial situation, then you were going into it. Even our own little things like an office lease, there's things we don't, we won't do. We won't sign personal guarantees. We won't do these triple net, whatever mess things. You know, we really, we, and they're still out there, by the way, just so you know, um, you can find, you know, mom and pops that own office buildings and different things and, and negotiate, you know, old school leases. Um, but anyway, that's a great point really quickly. Before we had got the office lease that we're in, we probably reviewed yep. probably 10 places. Right. And the leases were all personal guarantee driven. And I said, no, we had okay. some pretty heated discussions about it. She's like, what the hell? Why can't we just sign a lease like we can everybody pay the else? Bill. We'll be just fine. So I'm like this lease is not, yeah. it's, it's, they're basically gonna take our children if something goes south. Exactly. So we th- that's what ended up happening. We got, we found an, an individual guy right. who's uh, rational to talk to. And he's like, oh, you don't like the personal guarantee? We won't do it then. Right, exactly. Okay, so You here... have control. That's my point. You have control. It's not, people don't think they have control during a recession, especially like when it's there's true. a virus driven craze right now. You have complete control. It's true. Okay, so now I want to say, I want to share a little bit about changes we are making in our everyday operation to ensure that we sleep well. This is good, Joe. Yeah, and we can stare at the beach. <laughs> so two things that are very important to me. <laughs> uh, okay, so one is we are, I want you to always be careful about your purchases. So, so this is really for investors, right? You're doing it like me. You're worried about it. Do I not spend a dollar, Jill? What do I do? No, I want you to, I really want you to spend some money right now if you have it. Like Stephen was saying, if you don't have it, you know, and you're finding these good deals, get a partner who does have it because you guys will, you guys can sit tight with this good property. Uh, I want you to still send out mail. Our mail is still going. Send it out, you know, get those offers out there to buy properties. I, I really, I watched somebody today say, put something in social media like, hey, maybe I'm going to change my offer verbiage to include something like, gee, do you need a little extra cash right now because of the stuff going on? I'm like, uh, that's a terrible idea. I know. I'm like, I, I never want to be that guy. So I want you to, a uh, couple things. One, be real careful about the purchases that you're making as you always are. Just be, you know, I want you to always look at them and go, am I really seeing a good deal here? Or am I trying to do the, you know, square peg round hole? You know, um, I kind of see it. I'm not sure about it. Don't, don't, don't take any chances. You, you need to really just be real good about it, extra good about it. Uh, and number two, um, we're, we're still not terms fans. I'll tell you, we stopped doing a lot of terms transactions where we're the bank, basically. Like I will buy a property. This is what I mean. I'll buy a property. I own it. And I sell it to somebody on terms, on payments, where they're going to give me $500 down, $200 a month for however many years. And, and I charge interest, whatever I want to do kind of thing. I'm, we stopped doing a lot of that long time ago. The main reason was, you know, it's, you can't, the velocity of money, you don't get, you don't build up your cash that fast. It's a longer path. We wanted to build up our cash and just do bigger, doing more and more deals, which has worked out great. And the other thing is with today's environment, I'm sure there's a lot of people right now, you know, are talking to, to uh, buyers. Uh, if it hasn't happened, it might. Yeah. Where they're saying, I can't make the payment. I just lost my job. So uh, I, I was gonna, I have a list of stuff that, that I'm going to share in a few minutes. Okay. But 
this is a per good segue. Um, if you have terms, a lot of terms property, if you're a term seller, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know that 50 to 75% of the people that are paying you on terms are going to go dark. Right. So please don't, is that a bad thing? I don't know. Probably not. You sold it once, you can sell it again. Uh, you know, depending on where you are in the stream, that's one of the, the, one of the few really positive things about term sales, other than the fact that the prices are, the sale prices are fantastic, mm -hmm. is that you get to sell it over and over and over again. It's true. People default, you know, if you're an experienced term seller. You don't, you don't need to hear this from me. You can sell the property five or 10 times sometimes until it gets paid off and, and you deed it to the person. I would consider right now, say you have a, something on terms. Um, I would now turn and they go dark. Now, after, you know, 60, 90 days, whatever your personal agreement says that you could take it back kind of thing. Now I'd go sell it for cash. That's great. I would just do That's that. That's a fantastic suggestion. And just move it as cash. And that will help you feel really good. Yep. Too. Do you want me to keep going or you want to add some more? I have a bunch of F like just the same guy. There's about 20, 15 questions that I get during right. a recession that I'll do it whenever it's appropriate. So okay. This well, is kind of your show. I'll get through it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add to my list a little bit. I'll, get, I'll blow through my list and then you can do more on your list. Okay. Um, don't panic and don't, don't worry about dropping prices, crazy prices yet. I don't, I've just kind of heard people talking about that and I, and I don't want you to do that. No. So we all, we all know, um, especially if you know us and you're in our group, we're famous for buying things like 25%, 25 to 30% of its current, you know, uh, for sale, like similar for sale properties. We'll buy on this low so we can double our money and still get out fast. And I'm still way below everybody else up here. So I'm not going to change how I do things. And I, I don't want you to worry about that too. Don't go crazy. Yet. Hey, by the way, uh, at the end of this, we're going to answer questions i can yeah, see yeah. there's questions in here that's some good ones uh don't don't wait if you have put questions, your questions in and we'll circle we'll, back we'll get around to all of them yeah mm -hmm. kind of like our, our member calls if you don't know our member calls <laughs> they've been they used to be 45 minutes to an hour now they're like two hours because yeah. we're like all right we're trying to get through all these questions and we will. which is good it is exactly that's Should why have we're here today questions yeah i want that's to. why we're here um and i just want to say too i had one little quote here um one of our, uh, uh, someone put in social media in a private community and they may be on this. I don't see names right now, but they may be on this right now. So you know who you are as I quote you. <laughs> it's a, this was posted in a private community on Friday. Leads are down, but sales are up. Sold three properties yesterday for $55,000 cash profit. Nice to have that cushion during these uncertain times. And then they went on to do some other stuff, but it's not, people are selling, you know, it's still, um, that's kind of, it's like, I don't want to be, you never want to be that guy, but are there people that might be looking, huh, maybe a little more interested in having some land they can go off and just do their own thing someday and pay cash for it and have it in the bank? Yep. Can I segue on that? Totally. One of the things that you should do today or the next time you go to work is to change your titles. So if you've got a fantastic hunting property in, Good. I don't know, Kansas, um, you, we would typically say, really celebrate the fact that it's hunting property. Now I might change the title to, uh, we all need a little more fresh air these days. Check out these 40 acres. Or I wouldn't say coronavirus retreat, but I would, <laughs> you can have some, have some fun with it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Fresh air is a good uh, thing. Um, all, health, know. Healthy family members only come here. Right. <laughs> There's no chance you'll be uh, within five feet of anyone on this yes. 40 acres property that, you know, X, Y, Z. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> One acre per family member. Or like, you know, priced. Tired of elbow bumping? You don't need to do it on this thing. <laughs> Just have a little fun. Oh my it. gosh. <laughs> on 40 acres, you are socially right. distanced from right. anyone. Your 40 acres in, in uh, Ohio is packed full of trees. You can make your own toilet paper. <laughs> 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 all right so this is good this segues into my third thing and i'm going to do total q a but my third thing was things that you could be doing um right now to uh you know improve and change and and survive here so that's one change and, your titles yeah, andrew's title's great oh gosh quarantine yourself on this beautiful 20 acre property okay I, this is so funny you guys <laughs> I'm going to shut up, you guys. 
<laughs> this is great. Andrew's I a, love it. Andrew's a very, yep. very successful member uh, good. in the Land Academy group. Yeah, this is good. All right. So do you want to, um, I'm keeping all your questions here so I can see them. Do you, um, my last little note was this. Now is the time to buy real estate. Now is the time to buy land and houses. And, and I'll send, get to that in a second. Send out mail. All right. So this this concludes my part of the, uh, you know, agenda, if you will. I'm on Q and A time. So you say what you want to say, and we're going to do whatever. To some degree, we're mm -hmm. all opportunists. Uh, if if we weren't, uh, you wouldn't be watching this right now, or you wouldn't be interested in buying and selling real estate, or you wouldn't be involved in our group, or or you'd be doing something else today. Opportunity is when the recession hits. There is incredible opportunity. So. Somebody in here said, should we be buying land or houses? One of the things that Jill and I did to absolutely thrive uh, during the last real estate depression in around 2010-ish mm -hmm. was to buy houses where they were cheap and resell them. So Phoenix got perhaps hit the, we were in Phoenix at the time. Phoenix got hit hard, uh, uh, got hit the hardest from a real estate standpoint. It was Phoenix, Vegas, and Florida. Uh, most foreclosures and all of that. And so we were buying properties from a bank, from the banks on the west side of Phoenix for $20,000. These are inhabitable, perfectly good 1,200, 1,500 square foot homes. Right. Uh, we were going in there and changing out the appliances and selling them for 40 or 50,000 bucks really quickly, like within a week of purchasing it. Mm -hmm. So look for opportunity. There's going to be, I was just looking at, I, I spent all day today before this uh, event looking at property and content houses and content because the prices are going down. Right. It's very easy on realtor.com or Redfin to see price drops and you can actually sort for price drops and, it, and you'll see little pockets in areas where there's price drops. Those that's the place to send mail offers. Thank you. No, what else do you want? You want okay. me to go right into Q and a here? I can, want, no, I can you I've got a bunch of, bunch of, here's my question. Here's, I want you to be prepared nobody wants to be blindsided. This will help prepare you. Will the purchase price of land be affected by a recession? Yeah, it's gonna go down. That's great news for us. Will the sale price of land be affected by the recession? Yeah, the sale price is gonna go down. The volume's gonna go up. So really you should be doing more business. I like that. By the way, that's my first choice. Lots yeah. of volume. Yep. I don't care, you know, but my margin, my margin's not gonna change that much. Like you said, that's the best part. And the same goes for houses. Um, there's a little more research that goes on with houses. Like I just said, I, you can start to identify pockets and areas like, you know, really, really expensive neighborhoods for houses aren't gonna be affected by this, but you don't wanna buy houses there anyway. If you're, if you're familiar with a group, we always say never, never buy houses where you wanna live <laughs> <laughs> for investment purposes. Love it. Uh, will, will there be more land available to buy? Hell yes, tons more. I don't know what whoever uh, that quote you should be seeing, you know, all of us have are working on some deals right now mm -hmm. and all of us have deals that we've passed on. Mm -hmm. uh, and for if, if you priced passed on for the last couple of years because of price, give them a call back. Yeah. Say, hey, times have changed. Here's what I I'm expecting. And uh, I think that, you know, though our group here, we're famous. We send out a lot of letters. That's what we do. We send out offers to people. And I'm expecting there's a lot of sellers right now this weekend that are like going through their paperwork, trying to find that letter with your offer price right now because they're calling you Monday morning. That's it. That's really what I'm expecting. Because we've seen that. We've had that. I already answered this. Well, I, uh, I have a lot of property on terms. Will my buyers who are making payments default more? Hell yes. 50 to 75%. You can bank on that. Um, is this that your is, blog? Yeah. Oh, good. Thank this you. This is... Uh, <laughs> This is the, the reason that we stopped doing term sales was because of the last recession. Yeah. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just not what we do. We're not terms people. Every time we sell, every time Jill and I buy a piece of property and sell it on terms or buy a house and, and rent it out, right. we last about 90 days, she and I. And we both look at each other and we say, let's just sell this thing. Well, you know why? Cash. Because I always go, all right, I've talked to this guy three times. <laughs> He's had to move his payment date because of his paycheck thing. 
This is not passive income. We're data people. I'm having to do stuff. If you're in their group, you know this. We are data people. Yeah. We just happen to buy and sell real estate. Exactly. Real estate's just like the incidental part of the fact exactly. of how we use data. You're exactly so we right. we don't want to be landlords. Is it harder to sell land online like I usually do? No, mm -hmm. it's not. Because again, there are tons and tons of people that are going to come out of the woodwork and buy property right now. Yeah. In my life, I have never owned a share of stock until last week. That's how attractive stock market is right now. Thank you. Those, there's people like me there that they're, they're saying that about land and, and how they're getting ready real estate. That's right. Uh -huh. They're moving cash and getting ready to jump in and buy more property. Should I lower my prices on my next acquisition mailer? Hell yes. For land, lower them by 25% for houses, 10 to 15 to 20%. So we're used to selling, buying property for 25 to 30% uh, of its, of its uh, uh, retail value yeah. land. I would be going in now scraping the bottom, maybe 10%. So you, you're trying to go for a 90% discount. And I can hear it. I can hear everybody saying, what? You're offering 10% of its actual retail value? Yeah, here's why. And please memorize this. The people that are making the decisions to sell their property are not price is not their first concern. They just want to, they want it to be done. They don't want to own it. Mm -hmm. And that's all And regardless of the economic scenario we're in, that's always the case. That's the business for it. Right. For houses, we usually go in at 75% of, uh, you know, MLS sale value in, in its current condition. I'd be closer to 65% now, mm -hmm. depending. Should I change how I sell uh, the property? No, but change your titles. Uh, you should you you should do the you should never really change how you sell property. You should change how you present it. So you should be posting it everywhere. You should be doing neighbor letters. Uh, neighbor, this is if if neighbors who are not really financially affected by this perceive that they're getting a bargain uh, on a on a ranch down the street from them or a house next door, they're going to buy it. Right. And so make sure you buy it cheap enough to give them the bargain that they're looking for. Should I add land product types to my portfolio? Uh, for instance, I usually buy rural land. You know, should I buy infill lots? Heck yes. And in fact, now's the time uh, to start buying houses if you're just buying land. Um, this this week, no. Let it let it. It's going to go down further. This Those is are the great. FAQs. Thank you so much. I also have a graph here. It's just really important to understand. Well, very, very, very important to understand this. I love in it. In my opinion. Yeah, we're going to have, um, so that was your blog that you wrote last week. It may be out. It may not be out. Yeah. I don't know. If not, it'll be out. I'm sure next week. Mm -hmm. So you can read it in great detail and see that graph and the chart and everything. So It's very, very, very important to have this mental state. One second. Okay, Joe. Mm -hmm. You are better than this. You are better than all the, there's a bunch of people that are going to be over emotional and some might even be affected by this. They're going to be the loudest people about it. Yeah. You're in this group and you're buying and selling real estate and watching this because yeah. you're better than this. Yep. This doesn't affect you. Thank you. That was very, that was really cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's what I tell our kids all the time. Well, if you, and you want to make all sure All this you... stuff's happening over here and it might be on fire. doesn't affect you. <laughs> if you want to make sure you get this blog too and you're not in our email thing, just go on landacademy.com and get the free ebook like at the very top. Just and then you'll that'll put you in our email loop. So when like when Steven writes these great articles and blogs, you'll get notified and you'll see it all. So during the worst cool. real estate recession this country has ever seen between seven and 2007 and 2010, yeah. the unemployment rate was 10%. In the best of times, the unemployment rate is 5%. That means 5% of the people in this country were affected by that recession. And it seemed like the end of the world for some reason, but it wasn't. Yeah. I bet you a dollar, none of the people watching this are within that 5%. Or if you are, if you really are, you get laid off, you know what to do because you're smart. Right. The people that get unemployed and stay unemployed, there's something else going on in their head. Thank you. This doesn't apply to you. 
this has become the Steve show. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> okay. I know. I can't help it. No, it's good. I really good. <laughs> All right, go. This is why. You know, listen, Dad. We want to hear from you. <laughs> Dad. Dad just gave you a talk, and I really like that. She'll Thank sit you. in a driver. She's flying a plane. I right am now. flying. Usually, a plane. I sit here. Exactly. All right, I'm catching up here. Um, thank you so much. I've got some of these questions. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show some questions here. So Mauricio, how can I get in? How can I get in at the business? Go get our ebook. Go on Land Academy or HouseAcademy.com and get the free ebook. It yeah. tells um, everything about uh, our backstory, uh, how we run our business, what this is all about, how we buy it so well, how we sell it so well. The, just our whole base business model, if you will, it starts there. Uh, and then if that sings to you, get in our online community, you know, you know, go into landinvestors.com or housecademy.com. It's all free. It's all free to start chatting with some other people. And if that still sings to you, you you're like, all right, I get this. I see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And I, and I want to do this too. Then check out one of our programs and, and it's our whole business model, uh, Soup to nuts, as Stephen <laughs> taught me. I didn't know what that was until a few years ago. I'm like, what the heck? Anyway, it's our whole business model in there. And I'll just say it right now because it always comes up to, um, was there enough land to go around? Yeah, there is. And it's, even right now, I don't want anybody to worry. There's there's enough uh, properties. There's not that many of us doing this. You'd be surprised. And and uh, we wouldn't be sitting here and we would not have shared our business model and our secrets if we didn't thoroughly research this and make sure. Believe me, we had that conversation. We did. You know, should we share this with the world? Exactly. And you know what? We make more money now because we shared it. That's true. We make on land deals and house deals. And we're doing bigger deals with other yeah. partners. It's the greatest thing on the planet. So, yep. We, we now created a whole community of like-minded people where we can all work together and take down huge deals and do really well. All right, so Jenna says, hi, Jenna. Um, should we lower the offer price on the deals we already have under contract and with title? Go ahead. We just had that talk, just, just I mean, just today on a deal that we're doing. I gotta tell you, okay, Jenna, this is true, true story. They're waiting for me to wire the money. And I'm like, you know what? I need to have one more conversation. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna call the it's Mossy Oak broker. It's a, it's a, Nice property, big property that it's high end. It's high end. It, it, I needed to go and through a broker because he's going to have the right buyers already in his back pocket. I budgeted for this. It's not a big deal, but I didn't wire the money on Friday because <laughs> it was late in the day. I'm like, you know what? I want this weekend to pass. Just have one more conversation with this guy. Like I'm telling you all, you know, make sure that's a really good deal. Um, but I'm not going to go in and say because I could. I could go back and say, you know what? This I'm not going to pay this now. I'm going to pay this, but. Well, you don't want to be that guy. Here's the answer to your question. My answer. That was Jill's. <laughs> it's imperative. It's good. During these recessions in the real estate business, that there's a perception that your buyers, not your sellers, your buyers perceive that they're getting a great deal because of this recession. Right. Like I had the perception last week that buying a stock in a bunch of really like companies like Ford that have huge unchanging balance sheets uh that it was all just a perception perception driven uh scenario so in in this deal in tennessee that just referring to i didn't say tennessee but okay i did i know <laughs> <laughs> this property is real high end good, yeah. and in the end we're not going to change the price no I, I can tell you we're not right now no. because what we're planning to sell it for is so dramatically below the actual market value in any time that now it's just going to be a you know we're going to change the title the title is going to be, yeah. take advantage of the, of the situation exactly. in, in these times. It's going to be fine. Okay. Hello, Lisa. Lisa asks, in a time like this, is it better to focus on land or houses? As you know, yes, I am a member of mm -hmm. both programs. Where should we put our focus? Um, what do you think? There's going to be a whole bunch of brand new rural vacant land buyers out there. Uh, now is the time to press the really press those uh prepper buttons all the people these preppers are they're celebrating right now they're mm -hmm. in full speed i told you so mode that's true. selling some dirt yep uh with houses it's really important 
to to watch the market wherever you are like on I, for whatever reason and i can't i haven't figured it out yet entirely compton itself in los because we're in los angeles the prices are dropping dramatically so usually what ends up happening is the up and coming neighborhoods or the the less expensive neighborhoods really really get pounded the prices go down i have a theory on it and it's i think that people that live in lower priced neighborhoods tend to be more um uh affected by uh recession times okay and it directly affects houses thank you bear in mind with land you know real vacant land is a luxury it's like uh driving a, a rolls royce you know you don't have to have it to survive so it all becomes for sale <laughs> and, and so it, it's a good thing right thank you all right we i want to hit, hit this again steve asked um, how much should we change our offer amount and the percentage? So we repeat that just again, make sure. Yeah, we usually go into 25 to 40% on land. I would crank that down to maybe 15 to 20%. And then for houses, we usually go in at about 75%. Uh, this is after it's passed all of our data tests and we, we believe in the market. Um, I would go in at about 65%. Thank you. Michael's asking, easier to buy, slower to sell? Yes, a little bit. both. Yeah, a little bit. But it's happening. You know, I quoted that thing from a group the other day on Friday. It's happening. If you're a salesperson like yeah. Jill, this is this is just a feeding frenzy for you. Because you, you're, you're going to have to spend some more time on sales. But there's so much more stuff to talk about and yeah. sell. Exactly. Tim Cross wrote, info lots versus rural land. Rural land for sure. Here's okay. the thing about info lots. People buy info lots typically because they think in their head they're going to build a house on it. Right. And so during times like this, uh, new home development, it, it slows or stops. It stopped. Uh, you can watch it. The thing about new home development is that the statistics are published, um, like new home approval at the county level. The permits. The permits, yeah. Right. That's by law, has to be a publicly available. So you can watch housing starts, you know, like the way you watch the stock market. Watch housing starts in March and April. They're going to go like this. Thank you. I, I, we haven't sent out, uh, I will not send out an info to tell you to directly answer the question. I will not send out a, a, an info lot mailer during a recession. It's too hard to sell. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, thank you, Scott Dawson, for sharing this. I started to get calls from old mailers late last week. Nice. Perfect. Yep. There you go. That's exactly that's ex See, as we expect. It's great. There are not a lot of variables in a recession for us. Mm -hmm. That's really why we're doing this live thing. We don't usually do live things. But seriously, there, there are no, I don't have any questions about what's going to happen. And we're so we're lucky. I'm sorry. I'm last, laughing at Abby's <laughs> thing here. We know Abby very well. Um, why are people on the beach behind you not afraid? <laughs> I got to tell you, we went out with our friends last night. We went to dinner. We even went to um, uh, a, a, a music event. There were people dancing. It was so great. We were within five feet of a lot of people we yesterday. We were. <laughs> and our friends. It was get great. This. I probably shouldn't say this. I'm going to say it anyway. Uh oh, go for it. Our friend, deli he delivers airplanes to other countries. That's his job. He's a former uh, Marine Corps captain. Yeah. And he just got done delivering some airplanes to Italy and we were out with them. And yesterday, night. well, because well, yesterday was day 14, <laughs> seriously, of his self-imposed uh, quarantine and we're all good. <laughs> He's like, I'm okay. It's great. So anyway, we had a great time. Um, I think we just did that. So we, so Edgar, I think we got it. If I missed it, put it in again with the discount offers. So... We've been kind of covering this. You think I think we cut Abby? I think we covered that good. It's like, hi, Jack and Jill. You know, do house or land sales get? Oh, which ones do you think gets hit harder between land or houses? The last two recessions, the 9 11 recession and uh, the 2010, I'll call it. Right. Um, it was easier for us to sell houses, but we didn't suffer from lack of sales and land. But I'll tell you, we had a huge eBay operation, a rural vacant land sales operation on eBay that got crushed. So we stopped selling land on eBay and Jill came in and really got creative about where we were selling property. So a lot more property on the MLS, which is really a regular thing now. 
but houses, we couldn't keep them for a week because they're yeah. so cheap. Here's why we were using data to buy houses. And so there's all this money out there. People yeah. knew that it was cheaper to buy houses. They just weren't data people like us. So we were buying, we were using data to buy the property and selling them to people who were just waiting. There are people in this planet who wait for the for economy like to this. go down yeah. and buy stuff. Uh -huh. We know a lot of them. Yep. And we're not necessarily not those people. Exactly. We are those people. We are those people. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Landlords are famous for going on acquisition sprees right now. Yeah. This is a good one from Abby. Like talk like about, okay, so higher dollar land properties, like, you know, that we talk about the, you know, movie star ranches kind of thing. Will they take longer in a recession, even if price below uh, market? So I don't think so. And here's why, uh, because you should be working a database for people that the, it, it, I'll say this again, because it's worth repeating. I think this is the third time I'll say it now on this live event. People have to have the perception that the, the economic downturn is the reason the property is so cheap. But you and I all, we all know in this group, we sell it cheap That's anyway. A idea. That's our business model. Just make this celebrate the fact that they're getting a smoking deal. You're right. That's exactly right. You won't have any inventory if you're successful at doing that. Right. Land or houses. Yeah. Don't want to. Um... Hi, Lori. Um... Work back. This is kind of good. Lori has a little comment here. My my local stinking rich old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Um, got there because his family bought a blank ton of land during the great great depression he says they did it for pennies on the dollar and it worked back then too yeah. there's a yeah. if, if you um are bored today go google this thing called the stevenson method yeah it's a red book that this guy and his wife wrote in like 1976 and i was trying to buy the rights to the actual book i don't I think know. you know this i don't because the son so, okay the, you hear the original authors are passed away the son owns it and he just he never replied but yeah this this business model has been around since you know it has people have been around since you could buy and sell land we just do it now very efficiently because of computers yep. thank you michael michael robertson been landing can member one year help me buy and sell 30 properties excellent you're in a great spot excellent you you michael you know what you're doing you've been yep. here for a year you've got you got all the kinks worked out you've got 30 deals if you can do 30 what do i say now you can do 300. <laughs> So that's awesome. Great. Um, you can post that. I'll answer it. This one right here? Mm -hmm. David? Okay. Hello, David. I haven't seen you in a while. Stephen Jill, what land sale price points and property types worked the best for you during the last recession? So for houses, I'll cover houses because it's easier to answer first. Mm -hmm. You want, you know, you know, we always say uh, in House Academy, you don't want real cheap houses with House Academy because you got to list it and there's these fees and all this stuff. That's not true during a recession. You want to go into the areas where houses are seriously, seriously inexpensive, where the prices have been dramatically dropped. Like mm -hmm. we were buying houses in the worst neighborhoods of Phoenix during the last recession. Right. And we did great. We were yeah. doing excellent. We were selling them on Craigslist without, uh, without brokers. Right. Um, for land, it's not, it's a, the, the land is a rural, you want rural vacant land right now and you want it to be you want the prepper type people that mentality to be able to pay cash so uh 10 to twenty five thousand dollars sale price acquisition right. price is two to five to eight like right. that exactly twenty five thousand bucks is people who've been saving up for a recession that's not hard for them to come up with if they're if they're set up for that mentally exactly hi joyce joyce gave us a nice quote in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. Albert Einstein. Thank you, Joyce. Perfect. Okay. That's perfect. <laughs> Gee, that's <laughs> awesome. These people behind us are just strolling for their lives. That's right. You can see they're skating, having a good time. You can see a boat in the water out there. I mean, it's just, it's, it's good. Um, it's so funny. Hello, Christian. Christian says, with houses, would you focus on rental properties as opposed to fix and flips? 
or just anything you can get a great deal on. Anything you can get a great deal on. Now's the time to uh, develop your landlord. If you've been putting that off, develop your landlord buyer database. Landlords are every landlord I know who's in that business. And we know a lot of them. They go on just spending sprees right now. Anywhere they can find money, they're spending it on houses. It's true. Thank and you. And it's usually all the successful landlords that I know, they don't they own property and you know, not where we would want to live. That just seems to be, you know, I know in Phoenix this guy's got hundreds and hundreds of freestanding houses. He buys them. Um, you know, I sold a bunch of them to him during the re last recession. You know, he he he's waiting. He's been waiting this whole time for this downturn. Right. This is good. Um, Dave Denson asks, thoughts on buying through tax liens more or less during this time? Should be more distressed people behind on their property taxes? So there, the this is a great question. This is a PhD level question. Uh, tax liens, the way that tax taxes are set up, they have to be, um, they have to age. So. If you, if uh, Jill and I stopped paying taxes now, it would probably take five years before it would become five to seven years before it would come into a lien status. So you're not going to see that. Uh, the recession will be back up. Then you buy tax liens. So at around 2015 is when I did a bunch of tax lien deals because uh, the recession kind of ended in 10 and 11. There you go. There's That's never a bad time to buy tax liens. Never. It's a good thing to plan for though. Yeah. We can expect what? So about five years or so from now we can yeah. expect to see a lot yeah probably up. this recession will be a couple so of years 2025 or so, so 25 27. Uh -huh. that's a good thing to plan for i really like that but again there's yeah. never a bad time with tax liens mm -hmm. Hello. You know what? can i say this yeah, yeah what we do with tax liens is we get the list so i can get a list of tax liens now and send them a letter mm -hmm. and say i can make this thing go away for a hundred bucks True. instead of going through the whole tax lien scenario make sure if you're buying tax liens and foreclosing on them and that people aren't dead the owners make sure you send them a letter good tip and maybe you change the letter a little bit saying hey you know it's a great tip i can just get you probably have enough going on in your life right now with the way that the economy is how about i just solve this for you right now that's really good yep because it's either it's either you can get you can get a check from me or get nothing and you have to yep. deal with all the paperwork and the yep. oh then the the county hounding you for yeah. years um while you know while this thing plays out yeah because that's nobody likes that that's horrible i'd be like yep come get it it's, you, it's the thing that didn't sell in the yard sale and it's still in my garage and i gotta move it around and you're gonna come and just get thank you <laughs> if you're brand new to back tax property and it, it intrigues you the way it intrigues me michigan and Arkansas have a centralized uh, way, statewide centralized way. It's very, and it's all online. It's extremely efficient. That's the best way to get your feet wet. Uh, Michigan has a once or twice a year auction, and it's very intuitive on the computer. Right. Same thing with Arkansas. Arkansas is over the counter back tax property. Go buy it today. Thank you. All right. Um, I like this. Collins case wrote, hello, Collins. Uh, what is the mind frame for investors like deal funders, which is one of the things that we do too, during an economic downturn slash volatility, more willing to fund deals, more willing to fund deals, uh, or more willing to hold on to the cash. I just had one deal funder text me, say they do not want to fund the deals until the market settles. Well, that person's, uh, send it to me. <laughs> No, the deal funding for someone like us is the best thing on the planet. And I'm going to just explain a little bit what this is. Uh, we fund other people's deals. And the, the here's the deal. I'm the bank, but you're doing the work. And then at the very end, we split the profit. Everybody wins. There's no points. There's no interest. There's none of that stuff going on. You say, hey, Jill, I've got this great deal. I don't have the cash. And I, we all know what it's worth. And this is what I, I've got this, I've, I've got a buyer's pool lined up. I know how it's going to go. Uh, I'm Michael. I've done 30 deals, whatever it is in this exact yeah. area. I just ran out of cash, frankly, yep. you know, kind of thing. I'd be like, uh, done. So uh, you open escrow, you, you know, basically I get, all I get is the, you know, 
time to sign and where to wire the money kind of thing. Those are the phone calls that I get and you do the work. And then at the end, uh, when it's done and sold, uh, we split out of profit, uh, out of escrow. You get, you get your half, I get my original investment back and I get my half of the profit and that's it. And I love deal funding. It's, it's a great opportunity for everybody, uh, a great way to do deals. So I'm not sure what, who knows why, maybe that was, she's just uh, panicking a little bit. I'm not panicking. You know what? I'm not panicking because we've been here. And that's the whole point of this conversation right now today. We are not panicking. We're going out dancing. We're going to be on our yep. bikes with these people. We're going to be pedaling our way yep. through this craziness in a little while. I'm yacht shopping. And I'm not worried. So, I will buy a yacht during oh, this downturn. Oh, yeah, now you can. So um, that's true. But, I will give you the same advice I just gave my 16-year-old son. Find another girl. Oh, I was going to say, uh -oh. he's complaining about this girl. Oh, I just yeah. find another one. If you don't like the person that you're doing yeah. deals with, just find another one and don't stop till you find the right one. That's the advice I gave him too. And there's gotta, there's going to be a lot of girls. Yeah. That's just how it there's is. There's going to be a lot of deals. There's going to be a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> okay. It took me my whole life to find Jill. That's now I'm true. done. I just stopped looking. That's true. It took many years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And vice versa. Uh, Edgar says thoughts on targeting multifamily units like duplex, triplexes, and apartment buildings. So when, when occupancy rates drop, uh, especially for assets like that, the small apartment buildings, um, they tend to, there's a, a pretty predictable number of landlords where that just pushes their, they're already thinking like, why the hell do I own this small building anyway? It's, is it worth it? Sure. Uh, when they lose a couple of tenants because of employment rates and stuff, that that's, can be a good time to buy property. I, I will full disclosure. I hate assets like that. I think a four unit apartment building is stupid. And I, that's just as an investment. The only reason we have a really good friend, personal friend who is also in our group, who's very successful buying these exact assets. And here's what he does. does. He buys the assets cheap, yeah. kicks everybody out puts new appliances in, paints it, carpet, real just lipstick stuff, mm -hmm. and then marks it up, marks, then releases it for a higher rent amount and immediately sells the building. So his whole hold time uh, is ideally less than like six to eight months. And he marks them up pretty good. He does. You know, half a million bucks out, out here. Uh -huh. marks them, that's his margin typically. So, you know, that's the, only, that's the only way I would ever participate in that. And then just even then, I don't know. They're all, they all seem to be like built in the thirties and they're just a mess. The assets are physically a mess. I would rather just buy a house right, and, sell, and resell it and use the data. That's the issue with those, those assets. It's about the asset. It's not about the data. Well, it seems like to everybody who's does well in that group, that's been their thing for years. You know, yeah. that's his niche. Yeah. And he's got it down. And he's always complaining about he's it. He's got a Rolodex of buyers, mm -hmm. a Rolodex of, um, uh construction general contractors whatever he needs to come in and do rolodex you know it's like if, if you're younger than if you're born after <laughs> i can't believe can, i just said just rolodex go ahead and google it oh my God. don't be embarrassed oh my God. <laughs> sorry sorry you don't need to learn that word don't worry about it in his cell phone he has a plethora Ouch. of these people of buyers and sellers he's got people and which is true he's got people right now saying hey i need three more buildings like that you know, in the zip code, go find him kind of thing. And that's what he does. And he does it really well. It's not our thing. Go ahead with the Stevenson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Abby's asking. So it's S-T-E-P-H. Oh, is that it? Stevenson method. method. Okay. Here, but I can, you don't need to buy it. I mean, if you can, I have a copy and I really want to like scan it and share it with everyone, but I just think that's not. We don't, we want to do it the right way and not like so undermine this really poor will guys. I really will try again to buy the rights to it. But um, there's them. a chance that, yeah. Yeah. There's a chance that it's out. It's in the public domain because it's so old. So I don't know. I'll find. I'll figure it out. Okay. But I can save you the time and the money. Yeah. It's all in black and white. Uh, this guy sends his wife to the um, quarter to the to the assessor's yeah. office. Yeah. She sits down, pulls all the records for. He identified a place to buy land where I think they were in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. he identified a place. To, to buy land, sends his wife. She does exactly what what we do. Mm -hmm. She built a database without a computer on a yellow pad. Yeah. 
sent them handwritten notes saying, I want to buy a property. And they did. Yep. And then at, that's the whole book. Yep. And then at the end of the book, there's him uh, flying his jet. Yep. <laughs> it's so good. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. It's so good. All right. Let's see here. Um, Mike Misinko, I hope I said that right, wrote, um, hi, guys, for houses, the hottest markets are frequently the ones with lowest sales on market. Yep. But also being hot means mark, uh, also being hot markets means they're somewhat overpriced, overvalued right now. Better to wait a bit to acquire, i.e. the hottest markets maybe have the most to fall. Well, again, a PhD level yeah. comment question. Uh, the, the, mar the asset prices are going to continue to go down for at least two years. But I also said this to my, we're buying stock with a, with our 16 year old son. I don't obsess on trying to get, get whether it's anything as uh, real estate or, or anything that's commodity price driven like that. I don't obsess on trying to hit the bot wait till the bottom, right. you know, it's going down and it's going to continue to go down. And so it's now more than ever, it's important to buy a lot of assets because, you know, you're going to, at the end of it, if it ever ends, it never ends for us. Right. You look at the averages. Thank you. Don't wait. Yeah. Oh, hi, Nakeem. Uh, Nakeem Morgan asks, I hope this is for my team here. What's the average time of joining Land Academy since there's a waiting list? Usually, that's a, question, that's a great question, Nakeem. Um, I don't know the answer at all. I, we just started this at the end of last year where we close it up and it's a, it's a um, 500 club is what we call it, the 500 club. Anyway, if you want to get in the 500 club, I honestly, every month, because there's 500, there's things that happen. People come, people go, life changes happen. Um, so usually every month I do have some openings and then I announce them. I do like a end of the month live thing and I'll share some information or some training or something and then i'll make an announcement and, and open up stuff so uh usually usually you could get in in 30 days or less so i say go ahead and get on the wait list 30 days really well if you well because i usually oh, i usually have some opening up every month so you can expect if i got on you know april 1 i hang out to the end of the month of april i'm probably gonna have some i'll have some openings okay that's why i say why what do you think i don't know oh, okay i thought it was a lot longer than that oh so right now, I days is good. Yeah. Plus the money that it costs, it's like a hundred bucks, right? Yeah. Plus the, you apply that to, yeah. so there's nothing to lose. There. Oh yeah. And if at the time when I do, like if I, like last month, I did a whole big thing where I gave, I did free property and I, I, I made all the people that were on the wait list eligible. They are automatically got it too. Cause it's I'm like, like you like were there waiting first. For, waiting for a slip in a marina. Well, you know what? It's honestly, you were there first. It's like, I take care of land academy members first. These are our people, our tribe, our community. You know, when we like when I come out with new sites and things like that, I you know hook we hook our people up, and it's the same like on the wait list. You know, you're first in line. So, good question. Thank you. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Alex Alex Plo wrote my first two properties were three unit apartments uh, for me to hold. All of it takes is one problem yep. and you'll never make your money back. God forbid you need to change a whole bathroom. <laughs> exactly. Well said. Yeah. Here's the problem with three units. Yeah. If uh, one person, if one unit's vacant, you know, now your occupancy rates 75%, uh, 66%. Yeah. Nobody can survive on a 66% occupancy rate unless you don't have any expenses. Mm -hmm. Not certainly not in California. Maybe like, I don't know in lower price markets. Thank you. All right. This is so darn cool. I know this is Leonard's son and I always say your name wrong. You are watching us from Ireland right now. Thank you so much. You and Abby both just found it and put the link in here mm -hmm. for everyone to go find the uh, Stevenson method uh, book that we were talking about. So hey, you Irish you. guys were really hot on buying uh, tax liens. Can you yeah. shoot me an email or shoot us an email and let Catch us, us it was a while ago. Can you let us know how it's going if yeah. you're having success with it? Yeah, that would be great. Before October when we all hang out. Whether it's positive or negative, yeah. I'd love to share your story mm -hmm. or, or not. You can send me an email and say, no, that's fine too. <laughs> no, Steve, no. People say no to me all day. Not going to do it. <laughs>
Well, I got that. Yes, I got that. <laughs> That's really funny. Great. All right. Well, I hope everyone got, I know I did, um, got a lot out of this. So um, I've got time for another question or two if anybody wants to throw something in there. Now is the time to buy real estate. I will put that on here to, I'm going to hit this home. This is the point. Oh, wow. You like that? Exact same quote. How good am I? <laughs> Seriously, that's hilarious. <laughs> you doubt my techno, my uh, skills sometimes. No. I, yeah, are you okay? All right. I am, again, I'm, I'm in the, the driver's audio... seat. I am flying the yeah. plane today. And it went flawlessly. I even powdered his nose. <laughs> This is very out of my comfort zone to not be in control of yep. uh, all the cameras and stuff. Exactly. And that's good, okay. Good work, thank you very much. And thank you, everybody who's chiming in. I see notes popping in. I see, I see, um, oh, somebody, David, I see someone want to know what kind of yacht you're shopping for. I'm a Michelson person. Yeah. <laughs> like a Michelson 70 would be outstanding. There we go. So, and you're welcome. Thank you for saying that, Gary. Gary Rowe said thank you both for sharing, taking the time to share our experiences. We want you all to um, feel good about this. And yes, um, Bhavin Shah, we will, this will be, here we go. My team's typing in. Will we have some kind of recording? And the answer is yes. You can rewatch this in the same place after this is over. You can go back and catch anything you missed. We've been getting a lot of questions and comments and concerns and yeah. gosh, what do we do? You know, you guys have been through this and boy, have we. Right. So that's what we wanted to do this and open up to everybody, um, whether you're in our group or not, and just, you know, help everybody and make everybody feel good. And and maybe we'll do this again. Yeah. You know, I can, I'm, I'm probably going to do something now between now and the end of the month. And I might make it that usually, usually at the end of the month, like I was talking about, I'm I usually do like a training thing or, and you know, announcing people from the wait list and doing something fun. But uh, depending on the next week or so goes, I might just, you know, curtail it into more of this type of a dialogue. What's so funny? It's just comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are, we're a fun group. We have a good time. Yeah. I love it. Lord knows we can take a joke. So <laughs> bring it. It's good. Um, but, oh, this is great. Jack and Jill, let's buy an island. Tell Data Tree to get island APNs. <laughs> this is great. You know, we've purchased islands before this in is, Canada. This Jill is and I. Good. Have. Yep. What are the they monthly like operating? What are your monthly operating costs? It depends on the size of the yacht and how far you go, okay. right? Well, here's the thing that no one, I have to constantly explain this to even incredibly, even incredibly bright people. You, you don't take your own personal money and go buy a yacht. Right. No one does ever. Right. You start a company that yeah. has that uh, is in the business of chartering people out in the water, and that company needs to own a slip, uh, buy a slip, yeah. and all kinds of stuff. You're going to need a captain, <laughs> so it doesn't even become about money anymore. It just becomes another company that you know. What do we have? Like nine companies. Something that like one just that. happens to not make any money at all. I stopped counting. Michael yeah, Moore. Yeah, hold uh, real charters. It's not a fake company. It's just one that's terrible. Right. It's a terrible, horrific financial loss. Right. <laughs> and no, Michael Norris, we should not do it this way. Should I <laughs> tap into the 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 night the data and reverse engineer it for direct mail? I get it. <laughs> no, but make sure you're in all the prepper communities. We are. Yeah. Yeah. I you know, and I still yep. haven't done that. I've had uh in the past years, I've had some of them reach out to me with huge podcasts and following saying, we gotta, we gotta work on this together. You know, they just want land anyway for whatever. Yeah. And so I haven't fully, you know, volunteered my help with, for that effort, but Let's think about Lord it. knows we can help. Taking a piece of property as an experiment, like some a inexpensive rural piece of property and uh, bearing a container, a shipping container, and then just selling it that way. Cause I think you could get like five times more what you would just sell it for anyway. Like it was like a bunker? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dig a hole. A bunker. Drop it down you know, in. I'm, with some steps. I'm, anything you can do to make your property stand out on the internet. There you go. Maybe you put some grow lights in there. Yep. You people know whoever you are, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sell it that way. Thank you. 
RJ Knoll says, I just sent out a huge info lot mailer. <laughs> Would you skip acquisitions from that mailer or just try to get a better deal with what comes back? Get a better deal. Um, but just know this. Uh, it's going to, if you, if you're in your hold time on an info lot is, could be a year. Yeah. Unless it's real cheap. Hey, no, you know it's what? super, super cheap. Yeah. What I would do for sure is when the calls start coming in and the stuff comes back, I would pull a Joe and I'd say, look, you know, this is pre-virus stuff. So I know I sent you an offer for 9,000. It's really going to be about two now. Yeah. And I'm that. sweet Joe. So you still have to say yes. <laughs> That's what she does. Well, what, well, my, well, my main point was going to be, what else do you have too, by the way? A lot of these people that have info law. I mean, just, we know who this is. You know, a lot of these people, a lot of the sellers that contact us back, this, you know, they have lots of property. Let's see what else they've got. They might have something great to go with that. I'm going to sink a bunk. I'm going to make you know, a bunker. You know, and some, I got to tell you though, um, RJ, some of my, I've had some crazy, almost thrown at me here, throwing me the keys in fill lots, you know, just because they needed, they just were done with it. It wasn't what they, they weren't going to build there, whatever situation. Again, it's a situation and they don't see the value of it anymore. And they're like, here, take it. Even though I spent that money, it's fine. I made it up somewhere else. So. If anybody has backhoe experience on this call, can you type in how long it would take to dig a, bunk, a dig a container? Can you do it in a day? Let's say two days. I like this. All right, cool. And oh, he's are in the hunt. These are uh, RJ says, um, and thank you, Michael says it, it's a, a buyer's market. RJ said the one, these are in the hundred thousand plus dollar range. Well, you know what? Man. If I'll take a hundred, I'll take fifty. Yeah. And see. Just be careful. Yeah. You know, I'd like to think we're not yes men. You know, that kind of separates us from a lot of other uh, people that are in this this silly education space. There's so many crooks in the education space; it's insane. We're obviously not those people. So I'm telling you the truth. Be really careful with info lots. I have to say, I'm not sure I would be buying info lots. I, I would kind of just just get over the fact that you spent some money on a mailer and, and probably move on. Thank I you. would take the calls right. and, uh, and see, see what if else they have. They have. Yes. yes. And, and you know what, you know, take the call, see what else they have, put it on your acquisition sheet and, 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 and revisit it when you feel like it. Mm -hmm. Cause if, cause it, it will still be available six months from now. And, and you have a, now you have a dialogue with them mm -hmm. and a relationship. I love that. That's so good. Um, Oh, Alex says, okay. You know, it's fun. This is funny though. Alex Flo says, I'm a bit of a prepper, but mostly with physical gold, silver, cash, and lots of guns. Huh. I happen to know someone. Alex, you and I are not that different. Yeah. I'm What's in your safe? I'm a prepper in spirit, but yeah. just not, I don't wave that flag right. too much. We go into pawn shops. <laughs> he goes looking for silver and I go looking at jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a lot of both. Yes. That's, that's great. I was actually thinking about hitting some pawn shops like right now, like I wonder what I could get. Uh, let's see. I don't think we're going to do need that. Um, Blake Copeland said, Stephen, there was mm -hmm. a guy that bought I abandoned in Arizona missile silos, and then he converted them yep. to underground luxury condos. He sold for a million a unit. That's fantastic. It's it's people believe wow. the zombies are coming. Yeah. I, I want to live underground. Do you? I don't. Neither do it was I. Just like, Look, she I got scared. I, like, I thought maybe we were... I'll wake up tomorrow and st <laughs> I'm gonna start scaring you like that. Like, like, we're do done. You? I'm done with California. We're gonna live in a missile silo in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> Would that just break it all for you? Oh <laughs> my goodness. And I have I'm my own that. I have my own little um vitamin D lamp or whatever. <laughs> I don't know, whatever it is. A sunlight? <laughs> no, I have my own um so we can keep an eye on jaundice. <laughs> See how fast it doesn't oh, become about real estate? No. Because we're dating people. Please don't make me do that. <laughs> Not going to happen. All right. That's great. You're welcome, RJ. He's like, thank you. Pre appreciate that. All right. Matt Peterson. Hey, Matt. Matt said, digging the hole and dropping in a shipping container would be easy to do in two days okay, with the good. correct equipment. All right. Awesome. Okay. This is I wonder great. how much it would cost. So I think you can get a container. <laughs> I think you can buy a container for like 5,000 bucks, including Here like Here we go. Off. So let's say buy a piece of land for five grand, like two or three acres. Bury the container. 
got to take pictures of the whole thing, mm-hmm. film it, you know. All and right. And then uh, I'm going to do this. Okay. Cubland says, what do you do currently with your info lots? Fire sale, dump them at cost. Oh, if you have them right now, current inventory. Fire sale, dump them at cost or hold on to them trying to sell at profit. So that's a personal choice. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, one of the reasons that we came out of this last recession, I call it a depression because it was, was because we had a ton of cash. And we had a lot of paid for assets, just like you're talking about. So there were a few cases where I ended up selling some property um, where they're just going to smoke and deal. Right. And I think in two cases that we sold it for less than we paid, but I didn't, it wasn't a lot. It was like a few hundred bucks, Right. but it was just a principle. It's like, we've never done that before. Yeah. So if you can hold on to them, yeah. I would hold on to That's them. That's what I think. Cause if you did it like we did, you paid cash for them. You're okay. It's, it's, it's unless you want to convert the cash to like, the rural vacant land prepper thing and take advantage of it. There's no, there's no shame in That's saying, true. you know what? Times change. Nobody could have predicted this. Exactly. Times change. I'm going li- to liquidate this whole yeah. thing. And you got a great deal. Lucky you. Yeah. We've done that. That's okay. Um, oh, thank you. Tim Krause said this Facebook live just saved me $2,000 in an infill mailer. That's what I want to hear. You're you know, welcome. I'm, I'm glad. That's what, that's, that's fantastic. That's what today is. Yep. Ask us anything. We're going to be honest with you and tell you what, what we're doing and what we would do. Yep. So thank you. Uh, it, yep. Alec, Alex says, uh, I feel like me and Steve are on the same page yeah. link. Uh, places like Jim Bullion, JM Bullion. Yeah. Are out of stock. Oh, wow. Yeah. And their gold and silver offerings. Um, Jim Rickards was right. Jim Bullion is a great place to buy. You know, what mm-hmm. we, Jill, we did, we don't do it anymore is we would accept gold and silver for uh, like I have a, just a suitcase packed full of that stuff. We would accept it for property. And that, yeah. So we get the thousand ounce, I have a bunch of thousand ounce silver bars yep. because of that. We have had people offer us that and like it, for, for gold, for silver. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we'll take it. That's cool. Nothing wrong with that. Um, got, oh, hey, Lisa, Lisa said, Tim, I had one ready to go for an entire county. Thank God I didn't send it off yet. <laughs> good it's okay don't forget don't forget i don't know if it's going to go past this month this has been kind of a test with our offers to owners.com 10 percent off wednesdays yeah so you heard it here first hit the wednesdays it's 10 percent off so it's 50 something cents went down even lower right so it's like less than 50 cents now a unit to go out um anyway like really is cheaper than a stamp uh anyway hit the last couple went hit the next Wednesday and the next Wednesday, but after March, I'm not sure, uh, if that's going to stay. So here's what I would do. Yeah. Uh, I would do the mailer. Let's say you do your mailers on Sunday and then just hold it. Well, yeah, get it ready and 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 then submit it on Wednesday. Submit it on Wednesday morning. Yep. Exactly. Um, let's see here. I'm not sure what this was. Oh, the containers. You guys are talking about containers still. We can get them very cheap and used on the side of the highway in Texas. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we go. Dan Vanderven says, hey, $20,000 $20, will get you a luxury container. This is so great. That's Oops. an ex- Matt said that's an expensive container. This is yeah. good. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Lot. All right. I think you can get them for five. You guys can all see this link here. Matt put a huge <laughs> link in there. That is so darn funny. To a fifteen hundred dollar container. Okay, good. Thank That's you. This is great. This is so funny. Um, I wonder how much a backhoe is because I know this is going to work. <laughs> That's the next thing. Lori's <laughs> Lori's wants our silver for her <laughs> some Cochise property. I love it. I bet Jill okay. and I. This is conservative. Yeah. Have done nine thousand deals in Cochise County. We've done a lot. That's true. Maybe not nine. Probably six. Yeah. A lot. So yeah, cool. All right, this is good. This is a great question. Conway Chairman said, "Is this a good time to get into the land business?" This is when's a bad time. That's well. This is the whole thing, and, and I'm telling you, I am feeling it, and my team is feeling it. There's a lot of people right now that are right, rightly so, looking for other ways to put food on the table. This is a. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. This is not a time yeah. to crawl in a hole and yeah. do what they say on the news. Right. and distance and yourself and chill out and not do anything right now is a time for massive action don't take out loans yep you know sell some stuff yep. sell some stuff and do stuff the right way 
Yeah. This is a fantastic time to get in the land business. Yeah. And I'll yes. say, I'll, I say this yeah. in the good times as well. Don't make a flippant decision, you know, spend a few months at least horse around on the internet watching and don't spend any money right. watching us. Uh, there's other, other people out there. Um, make Talk sure you get in a community in a like this, like kind of, we're very data driven here. Right. Uh, so, you know, if you're just, just do a lot of, uh, due diligence, do right. a lot of research. Yep. Exactly. Read as much as you can. Oh, really? All right. He's in Ireland. Things have gone a bit crazy here in Europe. Schools and the bars are closed. Well, wait a minute. If the bars are closed in Ireland, what's going to happen <laughs> next? I hate to think. Oh, no. All right. Let's see. Oh, the bars hi. are closed in Ireland? Wow. That's Ireland crazy. Ireland invented drinking. Hi, Michael Alon. I saw your wife's lovely post from the beach in Mexico. <laughs> I sent her a little note, um, Catherine, a little note on Facebook saying the life of a land investor with, with their feet up and, you know, beers in hand on the beach in Mexico. So I'm glad you guys got in and got back. All, all good. This is great. Um, all right. This is not the time to buy gold. I think it's at the all time high. When things like this happen, people, the gold prices just go nuts. Oh, oh, like now's opposite. the time to recalculate how much your net worth is based on the gold. Oh. In your, in your What's closet. in your safe? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of precious metals. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, that's so good. Alex said, "I own a commercial painting company. I'm always trying to trade services. Isn't that great for silver, uh, for gold, silver, and cash. Amazing how people think that's stupid." Jokes will be on them. Yep. Isn't that funny? I love it. So, wow. Oh, and then in Boston, again, what's going to happen when you close all these things for all the Irish? Alex, you're going to love this. Jill and I used to own a mint. Yeah. If you go on eBay or anywhere else, this is true. And you type in Bel Air Mint, Bel Air, just like the car or like the California town. Mm -hmm. And we sold it. We sold the mint. Um, yeah. But if you, you'll see our stuff everywhere. So we used to, we used to melt down and then recreate. Uh, yeah. and so Jill was making, she would take a, a one gram replica of like, you know, an, uh, an Eagle silver Eagle. Yeah. The Eagle. she would make jewelry out of it and we couldn't keep it in stock. She would poke holes in it and put, you know, make earrings and like, do you still have I made bracelets. Yeah. I did. Yeah. We, we the Liberty, keep... you know, the symbols like the Liberty and the, I can't think of all of them like right the now. Buffalo the Buffalo. Nickel. I can't remember what that was called but yeah we did that so. the one gram the profit margin in one gram of silver is massive do you know what i got to say during that whole venture when we had this mint which was successful and fun because it was just something different we were still buying and selling land uh, on the back burner and it would just and there's just we could go off and do tests and do all these other things mm -hmm. it never stopped we never stopped so, We've never stopped yeah. buying and selling land ever. Once you learn how to do this, yeah, you'll probably always do it because once you send out, we and we've talked to several people like buyers, like um, you know, well into their seventies and eighties that were investors, you know, back in the day. They're like, you know, it's always just, I always get calls, I always buy, I always sell, just something to keep going forever. You don't have to ever retire from yeah. it. You can always keep it. You could make it your primary business, mm -hmm. like we do, or it can just be a side thing running in the background that just pays for your vacations and kids colleges or you know build up your retirement yep you could do you could turn it up or turn it down however you want based on what you send out your offers you know how much mail you send so it's really great cool um gold oh really oh <laughs> all right we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up here we're getting this is funny i have to say this yeah what's the deal with the toilet paper i don't know we're the, like most countries in the world don't even have toilet paper. They find other ways to, to do what they need to do. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, I love this. I always have. You know, Dan Vanderven said, do you market land to international buyers? If so, what are some good sites to increase our reach? All the, all the regular normal sites, we've always done that. I've always sold mm -hmm. to international yeah. people, and it's a great thing. The international people are looking on American sites. Right. Uh, I experimented with that years ago about uh, getting things translated into German and, and Russian and all of that. Uh, but in the end, the people um, that purchase property are going to be, they, they have, they either speak English themselves or they have uh, somebody who they know and they'll 
they stick it out. Right. All right. I'm going to say this has been awesome. Thank you Jeez. for being it's here. I know. That was an hour and a half. I know. It smelled like five minutes. It I felt know. like five minutes. I am Jill DeWitt. This is my partner, Stephen Jack Butala. We are Land Academy. We are House Academy. We're happy that we could be here and share some of our experiences. And I really hope that you um, leave this right now calm and with a game plan and feeling good that you know what to do because we did it. We're not going anywhere. Uh, neither should you. And we're here to help you. So you have some follow-up questions or things you want, send them to my team. It's support at landacademy.com. And then make sure you have my our eBooks so you're in our loop so you will get notified when we do things like this again. And I will definitely have something live uh, at the end of March. And if you want to you know, have another uh, session like this, we're happy to do it there also. Would you like to say anything in closing? No, I'll let her, I'll keep everybody uh, up to date on the container situation. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then we're going to watch, we're all going to watch for your blog okay. coming out here. So that's good. Right, good. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye. See you soon.